Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed and excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Now, we are at the beginning of a new week, and God has a lot in store for you this week. And see, I always tell you on this broadcast, the proof that God has great plans for you is Him sending His word. And that's what I'm bringing to you today. And I'm bringing it because He sends me. So I pray that as you listen and follow us this week, your ears will hear specifically the word that God has given or released to you. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Now, this is the time to release your faith. Join me right now and declare, say, Father, I receive now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we are still talking on the topic, God loves you you and i'm sharing this with you so that it will sink in your mind you must let these words sink in your mind god loves you now i want you even right now to say to yourself say god loves me now you know it's hard for some people to say it. praise god it's like nah 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 no, listen, I want you to say, now, irrespective of you feeling it or not, irrespective of you knowing it or not, it doesn't change what the truth is. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you this week. It doesn't change what the truth is. So I want you to say it, whether you've been feeling it or you've not feeling it, it's, this saying is going to do something to you. I want you to release your faith right now and say it, say it, don't just think it, say it. Say, God loves me. Praise God. Now, think about this. The quality of love anyone can give to you is directly proportional to the quality of love they are. Notice, I didn't say they have. I said they are. I'll take it again. The quality of love anyone can give to you is directly proportional to the quality of love that they are. Now, so when we say God loves you, the quality of love you should be expecting from God has to do with his, the quality of his personality. So, if you don't understand the personality of God, that will greatly affect the quality of love that you expect from Him. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. The quality of love that you receive from anyone, irrespective of what they give to you, has to do with the quality of your perception. So, you see, everything works in you. Everything works in your heart. God or anyone can give love. But the giving of love is one thing. The receiving of love is another thing. Sometimes there are people who have a challenge receiving love. They have a problem with it. They just can't receive love. I mean, when it's too much, they literally run away. They're like, forget it. And, and, and there, there are people who are suspicious of everyone. So anyone who's showing them genuine love, they become suspicious of them. No, there must be something. There must be something. There must be something. Praise God. Yeah. Now, whether there's something or not, but you see, the problem is with your perception. Whatever makes you feel that there must be something or there must be a, a hidden reason this person is showing you this kind of love has to do with things you have stored up in your mind whether you're right or wrong for thinking that way that perception has a lot to do with what you have stored up in your mind praise god now before we begin to talk about perception why don't we talk about the quality of the one who loves you 
Because we need to understand him first. And then we'll now begin to look at perception. Why do people receive more love than others? I didn't say why do some why are some people giving more love than others? I say why do some people receive more love than others? The problem is not the giving, the problem is the receiving. But let's talk about the quality of the person who loves us, first of all. So we talk about God. Who is God? <laughs> oh, what a question. Who is God? Wow. <laughs> what a difficult question. Now, John tells us that God is love. John defined, and, and, and this is the truth. He defined love with himself. And so John, having received from the Lord the meaning, came out boldly to declare that God is love. Okay? So, if God is love, who is love? Who is he? How do we understand him? Because if we don't understand him, it's going to affect what we receive from him. Now, I'll show you something Paul began to share in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, from verse 4. Now, I'll just go there because it gives a description of love. Now, I want you to follow me here. Verse 4, it says, Love suffers long and is kind. Now, John told us that God is love. So, we are looking into love. To know exactly what we're dealing with. And that will help us or help our perception. And it will ultimately help us in how we receive from him. I'll give you an illustration. Someone, you have a challenge. Maybe you need something. And someone says, I know someone who can help you. Okay, imagine you need a brand new car, for example. A 2023 car. A 2023 car. That's what you need. And you're thinking, look, I, I need someone to help me with a 2023 car. And then someone comes to you and says, oh, I know someone who can help you. You're like, whoa, wow, who is he? And they say, oh, he's a friend of mine. Okay, oh, good and fine. And then say, what does he do? You say, oh, he's a, he works as a clerk somewhere. As a clerk, yeah. Come on now, I'm not talking about a toy car. I'm talking about a real 2023 car. Okay, what kind of car does the person drive? He drives a 1998 model of this car. Now, automatically, your mind will just drop. Like, look, you don't even understand what I'm talking about. Why? Because by the knowledge of the person, you're already forming a perception. And in your mind, you're concluding that someone who drives an old car like that cannot be talking about a 2023 car with me. You understand what I'm saying? Because you just feel, mm -mm. if the person insists, you want to know more information about this person. Why? Because you're trying to build a perception in your mind. If the person comes and says, says what does he do? Say, oh, he's, uh, he runs his own business. He's a billionaire. Oh, wow, he's a billionaire. Yeah, he's a billionaire. In fact, he just ordered uh, 20 of the latest 2023 so so brand of cars like are you serious and you say he's your friend he's my friend if i when he ordered those cars he doesn't even know what to do with them i think the company called him and said that uh, they want to do him a favor ah, let's go and see that person why because now you 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 by the knowledge you have received of that person a perception is being formed and then now you're beginning to see that there is just a possibility that this person can be my source or channel for getting what I want to get. Praise God. Now that's why I say let's go into the character of God. 
So John says, God is love. And now Paul is talking to us about God who is love. Praise God. They say, love suffers long and is kind. God suffers long and he is kind. Take note of that. God is kind. And not just is he kind, he suffers long. You know what it means to suffer long? To stay on one thing because you know it is true and stay on it till the end. So love doesn't give up. All right then. Now it says, and it's kind. Does not envy. Love does not envy. Come to think of it. Why would God envy anyone? He can create anything. Praise God. Now the truth, the truth is, that is how you deal with things like envy. You tell yourself, I can get this thing. So why should I envy someone else who has it now? You see, so when people envy, it's because they feel, oh, I, I, I can't get what this person has gotten. Or there is no way I'm going to get what this person is about to get. That is what causes envy. But when you realize that, hey, I know myself. I can actually get this thing. You rejoice in the person that has gotten it genuinely because you know this thing is available for everybody for, you know, to get. Praise God. So, he said, love does not envy. Love does not pride itself. Love does not pride itself. So, love doesn't come and say, look, I, I, no, love doesn't do that because love is a giver and love gives for the sake of giving love doesn't give because he wants to gain something from you no praise god so he says love doesn't pride itself it's not puffed up i want you to follow me it's not puffed up do you know what i can do for you uh-huh it's not puffed up. God is not puffed up. Praise God. Love does not behave rudely. You see, this is telling us about the characteristic, the kind of person that God is. He's not rude. He doesn't behave himself rudely. Take note of these words. Love does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. I'm going to read this from the Amplified Version so you, you would understand. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Now, there are people who, who, I mean, I don't know if you've met such people like that. Their minds function in such a way that it is so easy for them to think evil. I'll give you an example. You say something nice to them and they're already thinking evil thoughts. You know, let me give, let me give an example of a statement. Now, someone says, hey, I'll deal with you. Now, one thinks, huh? Did he just say he will deal with you? The person just said, I'll deal with you. Now, of course, sometimes, um, so if someone says, I'll deal with you. Uh, now that's clear where it's going. And when someone just said, I'll deal with you. And he goes, did, did he say he would deal with me? He said he would deal with me. Ah. He said he would deal with me. Ah. And then they go and start preparing how to fight you. Only to find out that what they meant was like, I'll prefer to deal with you. You know, I'll prefer to do stuff with you. I'll prefer to do. <laughs> now, now. You understand what I'm saying? But then, their minds, because it's so configured to uh, think evil. So someone is speaking to you kindly and you're just all about being, <laughs> thinking all kinds of evil in your mind. You know, that's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. And meanwhile, there are people who, even though someone is coming with an attack on them, they don't see it in. Why? Because their hearts don't think evil. Now, 
The character of God is this. He doesn't think evil. Now, do you know this was the reason even after Adam and Eve sinned, God came and said, Adam, where are you? Oh, we heard your voice and hid ourselves because we were naked. And God says, who told you you're naked? You see, because God doesn't think evil. So I say, didn't God know that they were they had already eaten the food? Didn't God know? I'll tell you the truth. He did not know. I say, How can you say that? God knows everything. Hey, he did not know. But if the omniscient God, and see, that's the problem. Interpretation most times have spoiled our minds. So the omniscient doesn't mean to know everything. So the omniscient simply means to have the answer to everything. Now, because we've had omniscient, so he knows everything. Now, does God know the future? Of course, he's planned the future. <laughs> he's, got, he's planned the future. So he knows everything he has planned. Does God know whether I will get to my destination? Now, he doesn't know. See, how would you say that? No, he doesn't. If he knows, then all what we're doing on earth here is nonsense. Can you get it now? So, God knows how many people that will go to work today. And how many people that will sin today? How many people that will repent today? How many people that their life is no more fun? <laughs> that means he created robots, he has programmed us. I, are you getting this? Now, some of these thoughts are hard for people to comprehend. But when you now begin to know God, you will begin to understand when God says, I regret making man. God regrets how can he regret? Didn't he know that they were going to flop? Didn't he know that this whole creation was going? No. No. You know why? Because he doesn't think evil. He's not making his plan and he's seeing the evil in it and knowing that this thing is going to fail. Come on now. Ah, he made man, he made Adam and put them in the garden and says, hey, I know when Satan comes to deceive them. They will, they will fall for it. I know. No, brothers and sisters. He created his plan and he thinks good only. That, that's his mindset. He thinks good. That's why we fail him. If he knows what exactly you're going to do, then how do you fail him? You only met his expectation. And that's why God gets so pleased when we do his will. He gets excited. How can God get excited when he already knows what I'm going to do? You remember God got so excited with Abraham when he told him, go give up your son. And Abraham said, okay, God they actually raised him. And God said, stop! Didn't God know whether he was going to kill him or not kill him? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So why did God, I mean, wait, Abraham, Abraham, stop! Now I know. Ah, huh? God. You see, the problem most times is people don't know God. They think they do. But their minds have been so mirrored by what's wrong information other people have created about the personality of God. The best thing you can do for yourself is to know Him for yourself. Everyone will give a testimony about Him. You draw from their own testimonies. But the most important thing is you finding and getting to know Him by yourself. That's the best thing you can ever do for your life. Not just for your life, for your generations after you praise God. That you know Him and that you give a true light about His person. My time is up for today. But hey, can I pray with you? Can you stretch your hands towards whatever device you are using? Or just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray that your love will saturate these ones that are watching right now. And let the integrity of your love begin to register in their hearts. That they begin to see you for who you are. 
and have the right perspective of your person. And as they have and see, let there be a manifestation of your true love in them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.